Alright, what's up guys? It is me, Andy Gaming here, back with another video. I know we've been doing a lot of videos lately. I've been trying to um, do this type of stuff again. I've been in the Marvel mood lately, and considering that a Deadpool and Wolverine film just released, um, which is now part of the MCU now, because we got like X-Men stuff now, um, and there's going to be even more, you know... Um, people come in the MCU finally, like Fantastic Four. We're not going to be getting some Avengers films. We got a bunch of stuff announced. Not to mention, you know, on the gaming side of things, which is what I normally do on YouTube. Um, we have another Marvel season coming out. As of recording this video, it will be releasing tomorrow, which I'm going to try my best to stream live for you guys. I haven't really been streaming. I've, I haven't streamed since like a week. I've been kind of busy. I apologize about that. But I've been trying to get some videos out for you all. So. I wanted to do a tier list ranking of all the Marvel projects. Um, this is only MCU stuff. Um, so movies, I am going to count the shows that came out for Disney+. Plus. I don't know if I'm going to count any of these Netflix shows. Maybe Daredevil. I don't know about these ones, which I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't actually seen like any of these besides Daredevil, which I just recently started. I haven't even like finished it yet, but... I started watching it just because of the fact that uh, Daredevil Born Again was about to uh, release, or it's going to release, I guess, in spring of 2025. So, I'm going to try to do this quick. I feel like every time I've tried doing, I've been trying to do one of these videos for so long, and every time I do it, it's, uh, I, I just, I don't know, I can never really get it right, so hopefully we'll try to do this. I think the problem is I just talk too much, and then I get kind of tired of doing the video, so I'm going to try not to do that so much. Um, I'm just going to rank it, not really try to say much, and then just kind of move along, because there is a lot of projects here, I think this is like 50-something, if I don't count the Netflix shows, so, yeah, we do have S through D. Start off, though, we have Iron Man, the first film, what started it all, um, S tier, without a doubt, um, started the MCU, Great person to cast for Iron Man. Um, literally anybody that thinks of Tony Stark. Literally Stan the Man himself. Um, called, I think Robert, or like, referenced him as Tony. Like, unintentionally. Just since he's such a good cast for it. I mean, just like Hugh Jackman of Wolverine. It's just a solid film, you know, solid origin story. It's still not even outdated. And it's been, like, what, 16 years since it's been out? Well... Yeah, like 16 years. Solid film. Um, Incredible Hulk. This one's kind of a tough one because it's really the only film on here that's actually made by Universal. This was, of course, below when they were first starting. So MCU was a lot. It wasn't even really a cinematic universe yet. I don't think they really knew what they were doing yet. Um, I think pretty recently they just had a whole... And plus they had um, a different actor th than what they have now. This was Edward Norton instead of uh, Mark Ruffalo. Um, it just doesn't, it has a different tone to it. I wouldn't say it's a horrible film now looking at it, especially with some of the projects we've had now of MCU post Endgame, I'm talking. Um, but I'm still going to put a D tier just since we have that here. If there was, just know if there was an F tier, I would probably still put a D tier. So I don't think it's a horrible film. I do probably need to rewatch it again. Iron Man 2. Um, of course, following up with Iron Man. A lot of people did not like this one as much, apparently. I didn't even know this, but they apparently reshot this film. Um, it was not the original script. I, I get that like it was a little weird with like, the Whiplash and Justin Hammer. They, they didn't really have a full like villain idea. I mean, and Whiplash was like probably one of the shortest paddles ever at the very end when he was in that like suit that was like Iron Man's. And then you got to see Iron Man and War Machine just take him out with that blast like as soon as he landed. It was a very quick fight. Justin Hammer wasn't even really that much of a villain either. I mean, he got whiplash out of jail, but that was about it. I mean, but I really liked the suits in this, you know? You got to see him make the element. War Machine, again, was awesome. I know that was a different cast change, but I mean, we quickly kind of forgot about even the person that was in this one. You know? I like this film. I'm going to put A tier. I know people don't necessarily agree with me on that. But, of course, I might move this around when I'm actually putting these films here. But I like this film. Um, four. 
again, you know, I, I definitely out of all the uh, franchises, four is definitely probably one of the ones that is like definitely had a bit of a rocky start to it, or it just it's kind of went back and forth with its films. Um, if you watch the new four film now and then go back and then watch this one, there is a completely different change to these movies. It is like what even happened. But I really like this one. Again, this is a solid origin story. I mean, all of these original Phase 1 films had an origin story. I mean, all of these films had a different feel than what I feel like now they have. Um, with, like, Phase 4 and 5 and all that. But I really like this film again. I don't know if I'd necessarily put it A tier, though. I feel like B tier would be probably a good pick for this, right? You know, again, to see Loki. Oh, shoot. It's, my computer's laggy. I really like seeing Loki as the villain on this, and then just seeing, you know, four trying to become worthy again. There's not really much to the plot, I guess, but, you know, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, the total opposite of what the fourth series is, franchise, Captain America has got quite the solid trilogy, in my opinion, and we're about to be getting another film in February, Valentine's Day, next year, which is not going to be Steve Rogers. It's going to be Sam Wilson. So, I don't know if it necessarily counts, but he's still got the shield. He's still got, you know, the Star Spangled Banner outfit. I hope that he does a good job. But I really like this, you know, about to see an iconic villain, the Red Skull. It also took place back in, like, the 1940s, which was pretty cool. I like to see a, like, World War II film. This is really the only one that we've had with that. Um, it just kind of shows how Captain America became who he was and then how he ended up... Uh, fighting with the Avengers later on, how he ended up even looking the way he does seven years later. Um, but I like this film a lot. I think I uh, I think I'll put this A tier. I like this film a lot. Of course, by the way, for anybody that's gonna say anything in the comments or any of these picks later on, just know that this is my list, my opinions. You guys can have your opinions. But I'm not gonna judge. Try not to judge on my channel. The Avengers I remember when I watched this film for the first time. I watched this film in theaters when I was like six years old. Yeah, I know. I'm old now. Um, so it's, it's kind of crazy to think when the next film comes out, it'll be almost 20 with the Avengers film, Avengers Doomsday. But this was just such a cool moment. We never had a movie like this where we had like all these superheroes form up together. And even though Loki was the villain in 4, it was still awesome to see him as the villain in this with a whole alien army and it just like kind of set the ground for all the future films forward um yeah s tier it's kind of crazy too though because the director of this film um also directed the justice league film and let's just say the old justice well it's not really the old one but before when Zack snyder quit it um the shorter version i guess of justice league and it was not the same outcome as this one i don't know how that happened um, Iron Man 3, right after, this is Phase 2, I guess, um, again, you know, I have not seen this film in a while, this is kind of like the Christmas film, right, this was in Christmas, and Iron Man kind of loses his, uh, he's not even, uh, in California, I guess, this one's a lot different than the other two films, because he's on, kind of, on the run, I guess, he kind of lost his suits, and... He gets help from this kid. He uh, has got to try to get his name back from the Mandarin and save Pepper. Rhodey is also in this with Iron Patriot. He works for the government. Um, a little bit of a different change. I like this film, though. It had a, I feel like it had a little bit darker of a tone, if I remember correctly. But it also kind of, um, at the end, made it seem like we didn't really need an Iron Man anymore. Like, if you think about it, this would be a good ending for Iron Man, but... It wasn't, like, the actual end for him, but, like, for his films, at least. It had a solid, you know, conclusion. I don't know if I'd necessarily put it... I don't know. I don't know if I'd put it A tier, though. Like, it wasn't, like, anything... Because, again, with the villain, it was, like, how they had the Mandarin. It wasn't, like, the actual Mandarin, which they kind of redeemed themselves of that. It wasn't for Iron Man, though. Of course, this was way later on. We'll get to that when we do. Um, but it was Aldrich Killian that was apparently the Mandarin, which was a total different character and the comics, and then the actual, like, person that we fought that looked like the Mandarin from the comics was just an actor, Trevor Slattery, um, so, you know, that was a little, like, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, so for that, if it wasn't for that, I'd probably put A tier, but out of all the films, I'd probably put this one below, 
which I know a lot of people put Iron Man 2 below Iron Man 3, but I just like these two films a lot. Um, but then overall, I really like this trilogy. Um, Four to Dark World. Um, a lot of people hate on this film, but after seeing Four and Love and Thunder, I don't think people really hate it as much now. Um, but this was definitely that film where, again, we had a very, we had a villain that was actually forgettable, Malekith, um, the Dark Elf, which, um, this is also how we got introduced to the Reality Stone, um, the Dark Aver, I think I'm saying that right, Aver, Aver, I don't remember, um, we also got to see a lot of deaths in this, we got, we saw friggin, um, Frigga, um, Thor's mom, and then the supposed death of Loki, um, this movie's been out long enough, so you all probably know that didn't really happen, but, yeah, this film, definitely forgettable in my opinion, it's definitely not as horrible as most of the films that, like, are later on, again, like I said, once we get to post Infinity War, there might be some questionable rankings, I think I'm probably gonna put this C tier, I don't hate it, I don't know if it's B tier or worthy though, I feel like C tier, because, like, I could, I could still watch this movie and not, like, be annoyed about it. Even, like, now, I don't think. Um, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Um, of course, this is uh, after po after the first Avengers. Um, this is kind of when S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, gets its um, secrets discovered after all these years that Hydra is not actually gone, as we all thought back in the 1940s where Captain America, we all thought, destroyed Hydra, mainly because Artem Zola went to jail, and then... Red Skull got transported with the cube to, like, a whole nutter planet. But Arnim Zola somehow was able to work through S.H.I.E.L.D. when he got a job and then somehow got Hydra to join that. And then over decades, eventually, most of the members were just Hydra and not actually S.H.I.E.L.D. But it was a really cool film. This was the first of the Russo Brothers films, which... Um, they are, of course, now to do Infinity War and Endgame, and they're going to be actually doing the new Avengers films, so I'm very excited to see. I would really think those are going to be solid films, since all of their films were really good. Um, I do need to rewatch this, actually, but we did also get to see the Winter Soldier, you know, Bucky, Captain America's best friend that was long thought to be dead, also became a super soldier, um, and did a lot of unspeakable things, but was kind of controlled by Hydra with this uh, brainwashed book. If they said certain words, it would control him. But just really cool plot. Very intense stuff, especially with that driving scene of Nick Fury. But we're going to put that S tier. Um, see, this is what I'm talking about. I'm already talking a bunch, and this is going to be a long video. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it is insane to think that this film, this film came out in 2014. It's 2024 now. Ten years, bro. That is absolutely insane. I remember watching this film for the first time. I've seen all the films in theaters. I've seen most of these films in theaters. With maybe, like, one or two that I didn't. Um, but Guardians, love this film. This is literally probably my favorite MCU film of all time. I just, I think it's awesome. Like, not even, like, one of my favorite MCU films. Like, one of my favorite films. I just, I absolutely love it. It's so cool. That, like, I'm so glad I got introduced to James Gunn's movies because it just, he seems to just have a really funny sense of humor. He's somehow able to pick these characters that people don't even know much about and then somehow make them really enjoyable. Awesome cast. Chris Pratt, you know, became a big star, I feel like, especially with this film. Dave Bautista, you know. We got freaking the voices of Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper as um, Groot and Rocket, which most people don't even realize. Um, but just awesome. Seeing Ronan the Accuser as the villain, too, which was worked directly for Thanos. We just kind of introduced stuff for Infinity War as well, for people that don't realize. And also showed off another Infinity Stone. Just love it. This movie never gets old. This is going at the top. I always have to do it like this, because I can't just put it all the way up, because i got to scroll. That's going right there, though. Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah, after that, after the space movie... We go back to Earth, and definitely, I will say this is probably the weakest of the Avengers films, um, which, let's be honest, every Avengers film that has came out has grossed over a billion dollars worldwide. Um, 
this film, you know, Ultron, I don't know if they really made him as powerful as they should have, because in the comics, he is probably one of the most powerful things or, like, beings in the uh, universe, especially if we find that out in What If, because in What If, they, he literally holds the Infinity Stone. It's like, imagine if that would happen in one of these movies. But it definitely, it kind of has, it, it kind of goes all over the place. It's not a horrible film, again. It just, I feel like they jump from one place to the next, and they go to all these different locations to fight Ultron. They go from, like, New York to, like, Sokovia to Wakanda to, like, all these different places to, like, Barton's Farm. It's just, like, back and forth, and it all happens in, like, two hours or something. But I still really like seeing Ultron. I like seeing Vision and then, like, the Infinity Stone lore where Thor ends up, like, going in that uh, cave or whatever and seeing Visions and stuff. With, uh, Dr. Selvik, um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, really cool introduction to the characters. Again, I, I feel like the Quicksilver death was a little stupid considering he's a speedster, but I wish they didn't kill him off so early, but I kind of, I feel like had to kill off someone in this movie. Um, but I liked it. I think, uh, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't move these around. Let's put that there. Uh, Yeah, well, I think I'll keep that all there for now. Ant-Man. This is the heist film. This definitely had a very different take, um, or different, yeah, I guess different take. That's the word I can use for uh, the films. Um, just funny, you know? Um, definitely one of those films that just, like, again, I don't think people really expected where this film was going to go. I mean, people have probably heard of Ant-Man a little bit more, I think, than the Guardians, you know? Ant-Man's definitely a familiar type of Marvel character, I felt like at least, you know, he's the one that shrinks into an ant, um, but I just, I really like Paul Rudd's humor and all that, he's really funny, I swear to God though, it's crazy this man just does not age, I didn't even know how old he was, like mid-50s is crazy, I didn't even realize that, um, but honestly, I don't know, I think I'd have to put this in A tier, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like A tier is a pretty solid pick for that, I think most people would agree. Um, this also started another trilogy. I mean, out of all of these films, I'd probably feel like this was probably the best. Which I feel like makes sense. Um, you know, Yellow Jacket, again, I don't really know if I liked him as much as other villains, but I mean, for Ant-Man, pretty solid villain. You know, he wanted his revenge against Hank for not giving him the pen particles he made up his own basically, and I also really like Ant-Man's friends in this, with, uh, I, I'm totally blanking on his name, dude, the Mexican guy, what the heck's his name, Luis, I love that dude, it's just funny too that he's technically a criminal, even though he's still smoothie machines, um, he's just really hilarious, next up, Captain America Civil War, we take a lot more dramatic tone after this, Almost doesn't even feel like a Captain America film. Like, I kind of forget that it even is because it just has such a stacked cast. In a way, I mean, you can still tell that Captain America is the main character, but, like, it just feels like an Avengers, like, two and a half. It definitely leads up to, you know, the future of what happens at the Avengers on why. This is basically them breaking up. Because um, they have... Which people still, to this day, kind of argue about this film and who's actually right. Where, like, the government basically sees all the damage these superheroes do. Even though they save the world, they still have a lot of people die and cities kind of go, like, destroyed. Get destroyed, basically. And they decide whether or not they should uh, side with the government and do what they tell them or not and do their own way. Well, Captain America doesn't want to join the government. They, he wants to do it his own way. And obviously Iron Man sides differently. And they don't really see eye to eye. And they end up kind of battling it out. They have this whole airport stuff. But at the same time, in the middle of this, we have this guy Zemo, which is literally just a normal dude. Um, which, he lost his family with the Battle of Sokovia and Avengers. And he just basically somehow is able to drive these guys apart by using the Winter Soldier by controlling him, and somehow it works, and he's, he doesn't have powers or anything, 
these guys just end up fighting at like the very end. Iron Man and Captain America almost to death. Um, it's just it's just crazy how he was able to do such a thing, and he's still probably one of the most impactful villains out of this whole entire series. And to just think he's just some guy, but definitely awesome. We got introduced to uh, Black Panther and Spider Man. Spider Man finally came to MCU, even though this was like the third Spider Man. It was just finally awesome to see him actually in a universe that has tons and tons of Marvel films that doesn't look like it was going to die anytime soon. So, really solid. We are definitely going to put this S tier. Another Russo Brothers film, by the way. I don't know. Hmm. I almost feel like I like this one more than Winter Soldier, but I don't know, dude. We'll just put this here for now. I don't even know if I want to put... I think we'll just keep this list how it is. Alright. Uh, excuse me. Doctor Strange. Um, again, this is a really cool iconic character in the Marvel Universe that I'm really glad that they finally decided to come with a, out of a film. I feel like Benedict Cumberbatch was also the perfect choice. He just looks the part again. I can't really see anybody else that could play as Doctor Strange. He just got he rocks the hair and the goatee and just how he has with the outfit. They did a really good job on the outfit, in my opinion. Um, it does again have a forgettable villain. I don't know why Marvel's good at that, but I don't even remember his name, to be honest. I could picture his face, but it's just, it's not really anything crazy. I, I really enjoyed the first half of this film, and then the second half, I just, like, I don't really know what they were going for, but again, I don't hate this film. I think I'd probably put this B tier. The Doctor Strange films are definitely a little, like, back and forth, in my opinion. Um, but once we get to the other one, off. But, I mean, I still like th this character. Like, there's nothing wrong with this character. Guardians 2. This is probably... I've seen a lot of MCU lists, and it's, of course, I'm a Marvel fan. I'm going to see what other people's rankings are. This film, I don't know why, is probably one of the most controversial films in anybody's list. I don't know why people do it. But people do not like this film as much as others. I really don't know why. Because it, it, honestly, in my opinion, I'm sure someone's been looking for a YouTuber that's going to say it, but I really like this film. It is a solid film. I mean, I, I, I get that it doesn't really have an impact on the MCU. I mean, well, besides the fact that there's literally a planet that, you know, planted himself on Earth for one and was going to spread himself across the whole planet. But, you know... It has a good follow-up to Guardians, you know, it It was cool seeing Ego. I guess, I just, I don't know why people were just always hated it. I mean, I still like the music to it. Um, it had just about as much action as the first one. And also had probably one of the saddest deaths in history, in Marvel history, with uh, Yondu. But, you know, I, I like this film. So, you know what, guys? For all those people that hate on it, I know I said this is my opinion, but we're putting this A tier, so... Y'all take notes. We're gonna even put this, like... I'm gonna put this right behind Captain America, I think. I really like this film. So, y'all say what you want, but... I was a big fan of this one. Then we go to Spider-Man Homecoming. This was the film that was not an origin story for the first time. But granted, we already got it twice. And they did a good job with it both times. I mean, Amazing Spider-Man had its own thing. And they still did a good job with it. I really enjoyed what they were going for with its little rebooted version. But this was not an origin story. We actually got introduced to Spider-Man, like I said, in Civil War. But this was kind of just Spider-Man, and also in this Marvel Universe, Spider-Man's kind of got a mentor, and that is, in fact, Iron Man. So he's kind of, and Spider-Man's suit's also, like, made from Iron Man's, like, Armors, I guess, kind of. I don't really know how to explain it. I guess eventually he does have, like, the vibranium for his suit, right? But it was designed by Tony Stark himself. And the villain in this, the Vulture, you know, also was trying to steal uh, Tony Stark's tech. Like, or not, I guess it was it was on Tony Stark's plan, but it was Chitauri tech, right? But I really like the version of Vulture, you know. That's an iconic villain of Spider-Man that has not actually been shown. Michael Keaton... An awesome actor, in my opinion, which in the DC Universe, we know him as Batman. So it's just kind of a cool little change that he played a villain in the Marvel Universe. But 
I always liked this film. The Spider-Man trilogy, in my opinion, was always good. Um, again, I think I'm going to put this A tier. Um, I'm going to put it right below here. Definitely recommend it, though. Uh, for Ragnarok, this film, I've always seen people say this is probably the best film out of all the four films. I'm not going to lie, I, I think I agree with that. I really like the change of pace of this one. Um, this was directed by the one and only Taika Waititi, um, which also voiced Korg, the big rock guy, um, which I think was really hilarious. I liked the how... And this one, four was actually trapped on this planet known as Sakaar, which was in like the in between of like the uh, the Bifrost. Um, also, really like seeing Loki in this one. Like, this is probably one of my favorite uh, movies showing Loki. Actually, besides like Avengers, I just really liked how they changed his character. In my opinion, Loki honestly has had even greater character development than four, but he's also had even more screen time plus a show. But we'll get to that. Um. Really dig Thor's new look though too with the hair. Seeing Hulk in this too, I, st I can't, I still can't ever forget seeing at the end of that trailer, showing Hulk come out on the arena when Thor was about to battle and he just screams yes. It was such a cool moment. I absolutely loved that. You know, Hela, pretty solid villain. Kind of cool little twist that we had a her as a sister or Thor as a sister and that she was the rightful heir to the throne and she only came if uh, Odin was gone. And seeing the whole ending there with uh, Asgard just getting destroyed, very unexpected. But it, just, it had the right amount of humor, right amount of action. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know what happened with the next four installment when he rep directed it, but it was not quite the same. Um, but yeah, A tier. I think we're going to do another A tier. Phase 3 had some pretty solid films. I mean, Phase 3 by far was the best... Uh, um, oops was the best of the uh, phases, in my opinion. Can we move this over? It is, like, so laggy right now. Okay. I don't know what's going on, chat. Yeah, I really just said chat. Yo. What are we doing? Oh, no. Please say we're still working. Oh, my goodness. This computer's so laggy, yes. All right. I'm going to have to put this over here. Black Panther. Of course, again, we did get introduced to him in the Civil War, but this was still an origin story type of film. Um, this was a much different Marvel film than what we've ever had. Um, mainly for the fact because, one, we've never had like a film where we got a bunch of Wakandan people and just a different like type of tribe, I guess. We haven't had any of those types of films. Um and we haven't gotten introduced to the vibranium and all that. There's just a lot of cool stuff of this. Um, had a really solid um, cast as well. Chadwick Boseman, the actor that plays Black Panther, of course. Really solid choice, in my opinion, for this character. He just played him really well. Has very good um, scenes with him showing. Michael B. Jordan, too, as Killmonger. Great villain, in my opinion. Um, I liked him. Seeing... Um, Claw again in this. I honestly liked seeing him even more than what they showed in Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, I feel like he kind of redeemed himself as a bit more of a villain in this one. But, yeah, unfortunately, I know what happened with Chadwick. I wish that, obviously, we would have got to see more of him. They kind of uh, had to change things with his character later in the future, which we'll get to. But, awesome film. They did a really good job of this one. Um, I don't even think I've seen this film that many times since it's been out. It's been out for like six years. It's just one of those films that just like, you know, definitely hits different when you watch it. But I really wish we could have seen more of him because I know that they were going to keep him around if he didn't die. They were just going to dramatically kill him off, I don't think. But we'll put him for there for now. That's dear. Infinity War. This, I said Avengers, you know, was the film that kind of changed everything because we had all of those Marvel characters team up together to fight one threat. Well, this one is the uh, culmination of all of that, of all the films that we have ranked since then. And to take on a threat that is the biggest one yet, and that would be, of course, Thanos, the man, 
or the being that will try to hold the most powerful stones on the palm of his hand, I guess, or on his fingers. But, and somehow he's able to do it. Even if all the heroes teamed up together, even the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, literally everybody that we've seen, as well as Cap, even though Iron Man and Cap saw different sides, we all got to see him, and then they still lost. And then at the end of it, Thanos snaps his fingers, and half the population, not only of Earth, but like of everybody, but like the whole world, or I guess, no, the whole galaxy, disappeared. And we didn't really know where this was going to go, because um, it just ended like that, where Thanos was sitting, you know, at this planet and resting. And we didn't really know where it was going to go. We didn't even figure it out until about a year later. So it was a very questionable year. I think that they're going to do stuff that's similar like that again with the uh, next Avengers film. Not quite like that, I don't think. But just we're going to have some, like, unexpected cliffhanger. And we're not going to get our answers for a year. But just, again, one of those films, it's just like, whoa. Like, what is these? what have these films turned into? And then the amount of deaths in this, too, and... The deaths that we thought were going to happen that didn't. I mean, we thought Iron Man was going to get killed in this one because Thanos literally stabs him with his own tech and then puts him on the ground. And we really thought, I really thought he was going to die right then and there. Surprisingly, didn't. And then we just see all of our heroes disappear. Spider-Man being one of the saddest. Um, Because Tony's just holding him, telling him he doesn't want to go. It's just very emotional. This is by far going up on S tier. A lot of people say this is their favorite film, which, you know, I don't blame them for saying that. I do think, though, that this does need to go right here. For anybody that's never seen the film, definitely watch it. It is, it's incredible. I don't know how they were able to do it, but they did. Um, what? Hold up. Oh. Well, that's weird. Ant Man and the Wasp. That's actually funny because I was actually going to put that right there, but I don't remember putting that there. That's weird. Um, yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp, the sequel. That because um, again, we also had to wait a couple films after Infinity War because, of course, they wanted to have the suspense even more. And we also usually got like free films a year. Um, we ended up getting an Ant Man film, which was the total opposite of Avengers: Infinity War. Not as intense. Um, Ant-Man was not around for the Infinity War stuff. He was under house arrest. He wasn't even technically supposed to be battling anybody at all. Um, in my opinion, this is probably, I'd say, one of the weakest films in Ant-Man. Because even Quantumania, I kind of liked a little more just because of the villain. Ghost wasn't even necessarily a villain in this movie, from what I remember. It was more of a, her like dad, I guess, Bill Foster, the guy that was the Goliath that was more of the villain, right? Um, I remember Sonny, the, like, the guy that was, like, the businessman or whatever, he was pretty cool, too, and I like the truth serum joke, but, but definitely wasn't as cool, in my opinion, as Ant-Man, um, it was cool seeing, um, Hope take on the, um, mantle of Wasp, you know, she was definitely perfect for that role, in my opinion, seeing a little team-up film, because if you think about it, yeah, this was kind of the first MCU team-up type of film, even though she was already in um, Ant-Man. But, yeah, I'd probably say this out of all of them was probably the weakest one, which might be a little controversial, but we'll get there when I get to Quantumania. And then we get to Avengers Endgame. Originally, this was supposed to be Infinity War Part 2. Um, I'm going to start voice cracking now. I've been talking a lot. Um, but I'm glad they kept it with this name. People, I always notice people like rank this like A tier or whatever. Like people don't like this. I almost like this film even more than Infinity War, which a lot of people like Infinity War more. I don't think it really matters which film's better. I just, I really like this one because in my opinion, this was kind of the ending to a saga. It's not the end of the MCU. I mean, there is other films after this, obviously, that we kind of wanted to see. But it's mainly for people with the fans now at this point, for the stuff that people want to see. Um... But this was kind of just the conclusion to the characters that we've known since 2008. And then 10 years later, we're going to be seeing them basically come to end. Because when we get to the next Avengers film, a lot of these characters, you got to understand, we're going to have a lot different of a cast. Because obviously there's no more Iron Man. 
There's no more Captain America, no more Black Widow. I mean, lots of things change, and I just, I really loved how we did all the time travel stuff. Not to mention the time skip after killing Thanos, because we killed him at the beginning and thinking, oh, the problem's done. Well, not really, because nobody's brought back. And then we go five years. And it's like, whoa. And then we see that pretty much everything is just, you know, empty. And, yeah. It's just very, like, we're not really sure what's going to happen. And then they end up finding out time travel does, in fact, exist. And this kind of introduces a little bit of what's going to happen for the next phase, too, if you think about it, because... After the Infinity Saga for Phases 4 starting, we have the Multiverse Saga going on right now. So, in a way, this kind of started that, wondering we're going back in time to all the different areas, like back when the Battle of New York happened, and then the Battle, um, I guess, the events of Guardians, and then there was also, they went back to, uh, what was the other one? To Asgard. Yeah. Before Malekith killed his mom. Force. The... And then we had this epic battle at the end with Thanos, the past Thanos, finding out um, through Nebula's memories what they were planning on doing, and then somehow transport. Well, he transports back to their time and just has a have an epic battle. I think it was like an hour long, and then yeah, just I'm not gonna go through the whole plot because you all probably seen it, but I just love it. Awesome ending too of Captain America, just dancing away with Peggy Carter. Because that's kind of what he wanted was the date with her. And it's just really awesome ending for him, in my opinion. And for a lot of characters. I'm going to put this... Yeah, I'm going to put this here. I like this film a little better than Infinity War. I just always like this film. I actually just watched this on New Year's Eve. Because, you know, I want to start the new year off with, uh, with this film for some reason. I was trying to make him coincided with midnight with Thanos snapping his fingers at the end but it was close I think I was off by like a minute but anyways for whatever reason we did not actually end off phase three with that film we ended off with this film I don't really know why they decided to do it with far from home um sorry keep drinking water I would have thought that they were gonna end off with in game, obviously. But I guess this was kind of like a little bonus film. Again, this is another one of those films that people were kind of hate on. I don't really know why. Um, oh, yeah, Captain Marvel. What happened to Captain Marvel? I don't remember putting Captain Marvel up here. Um, again, this is another film that people were kind of hated on. Sorry, I don't really know why. Which, from what I've heard about the new Captain Marvel, which I'm going to be honest, I have not seen. So I don't even know if I'm going to rank that one on here. That film, I think, honestly made about the least amount of money out of any Marvel film, but just did not do very well. But I honestly enjoyed this film. I thought it was pretty underrated. Um, I really like seeing Nick Fury, a younger version of him, or I guess a younger version of S.H.I.E.L.D. too. Um, the Scrolls too, which is a pretty big uh, t crew of... Um, villains, I guess, in the MCU series. I mean, literally, one of the big arcs of the comics was Secret Invasion, which does end up actually happening in the MCU, which is a show, which we will get to. Um, but Captain Marvel, um, you know, they kind of make her as, like, one of the most powerful characters. Um, she definitely is. This big cosmic energy. She's got all that cosmic energy powers and all that. She just has... She basically do anything. Um... So it was pretty cool seeing her in Endgame. I, I definitely feel like she could have taken out Thanos a lot quicker, though. Than what She didn't even really take him down. I guess then again, he did have... And he didn't even have the Infinity Stones. I feel like they kind of nerfed her a little on that. But Definitely recommend it, though, for people for people that hated on it, though. I mean, that's just your opinion, I guess. But I, I thought it was pretty decent. I'm still going to put it down on the bottom, though, because I don't think it's, like, the best. But, you know... I also really like the twist of the Kree actually being the bad guys instead of the Scrolls, which I guess you could have guessed considering that Ronan was a Kree and was kind of a bad guy. But it's not like all the Kree are bad people. Same with the Scrolls, obviously. Which we find out in Secret Invasion. But yeah, anyway, Spider Man Far From Home. Um, like I said, another controversial film. I definitely do think out of all the Spider Man films, this is probably the weakest. But, you know, I like seeing Mysterio as a villain. You know, it's another iconic 
Spider-Man villain. Um, I think a lot of people knew that he wasn't actually going to be a hero like he said he was at the beginning because he literally, you know, is one of the villains. But that is what he does is he causes these illusions. He doesn't even have powers. He just uses, like, magic, I guess. And I guess in this he uses different cameras to, you know, project different things, making it look like these are like these are big frets and all that. Even projecting people that Spider-Man knew. And they're not even there. So... He definitely had a pretty big impact on Spider-Man and honestly kind of changed his life forever, especially at the end, because we end up finding out that he actually leaked Peter's identity to the entire world. So it kind of does have a pretty big impact because that ends up going into this next film with Spider-Man. But I really liked it. I did not hate it as much as others. I think I'm going to end up putting it right well, no. I think I'm going to put it over Doctor Strange. I'm not going to lie. I like the film. Like I said, this might be a little controversial because I know how people are. But this does start Phase 4. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how long I've been recording this, but I might... I don't know. Because like, we don't really have that many projects, but I don't know how long this is going to take. This is when we end up starting with the uh, Disney Plus shows. And this does also kind of... Um, Changed Marvel a little bit because, of course, um, we have a lot more TV series. So, and then they also waited like a year for this stuff to come out because of COVID. This they had a whole entire year, and then I just I feel like the problem with 2021 when they had all this stuff, they just had way too much Marvel content in my opinion. We they gave us way too much. I mean, they gave us like three different shows and like four different movies. There's just a lot. Actually, I think it was like. Yeah, I think it was like four or five different TV shows. But that four TV shows, four movies, that's a lot. But anyways, WandaVision. This was definitely a miniseries. I don't think we're ever going to see a season two, considering how it ended. But definitely a good start to, I guess, phase four. Um, getting to see Wanda as, in fact, kind of not exactly a good character anymore. But we do get to see the return of Vision, too. Um since he got killed off in Infinity War, um, which I always liked Vision. Um, it kind of had a little different take. We didn't really, we weren't really sure where it was going for the first couple episodes because it was basically based, she was making her world based off of like different television shows you used to watch when she was young, and we kind of went to different times of um, different periods of shows. Um, at the beginning of the show, we went from like the 1950s to the 1960s. It just had different feels to it. Like it went from even black and white, and just the different outfits in this show. They were very creative, and then it just it turned out that it was actually Wanda just projecting this over a force field. And then in the middle of it, we have another witch that was um, inside of this world that was uh, also um, battling her, which. I don't even know if Agatha was really even a villain in this. I guess she was kind of posed as the villain in this show, but she's actually supposed to be getting a show later this year, which I don't really know how I feel about that. Um, I don't really know if they need to make a spinoff of a character that was introduced from a show on Disney+, Plus, but I don't know. I might end up watching it. I think I'm probably going to put this B tier just because I thought it was pretty decent. I'd watch it again. Um... It definitely kind of leads into what happens in a later film for Wanda's story. With her kids specifically. So, yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Again, I think this was kind of a mini-series. A lot of these series is kind of convenient because they made a lot of, like, mini-series of this. But we have to see Sam Wilson, of course, and Bucky Barnes teamed up. Um, of course, after Captain America's death. And he has the shield. Falcon isn't really sure if he wants to... Uh, be Captain America, and he puts it up in the museum. Well, it doesn't really last long because the government ends up um, taking it from him since he kind of just lends it away and gives it to this guy called John Walker, which is definitely not Captain... Well, he's not really Captain America material because he doesn't really act like Captain America and doesn't end up actually killing somebody. Not to mention it doesn't even... He's not even as strong at the beginning at least but in my opinion I thought he was honestly probably one of the best first or like best characters in this show which I really like seeing his character I just thought he had some uh um I just really like how they had him portrayed and I'm really one I'm really interested in seeing him and Thunderbolts when he plays uh US agent I'm really glad that they're going to continue his story 
as that character. Um, I really thought the fight with them, Bucky and Falcon, was all really cool too. And I honestly liked him more of, I guess, of a villain type than the actual villains themselves, the Flag Smashers. They just they didn't even really seem like villains, and they'd always like run away. I feel like. And they'd always, I don't know, they just didn't even really seem like bad people. And then they had that twist at the end of, uh, it turned out that, um, what's her name? Peggy, not Peggy, Sharon, Sharon Carter ended up being the power broker. And she ended up being a bad character. It was just kind of, like, unexpected, I guess. But it was just like, I don't even know if they really need to do that. So, I don't know. I feel like I need to put the C tier, because we have, like, no C tier movies, I just realized. I'm not gonna lie, now that I look at this, I don't know if I want. Eh. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking maybe Captain Marvel doesn't need to be B tier. I'm talking with Ant Man Wasp. I'm gonna put Ant Man Wasp at C tier. I think I'm gonna do that. Um. Loki. This was also kind of introduced in the multiverse to us, which wasn't even really in any universe. This was like the TVA's type of branch, which is the people that watch over, I guess, the universes and make sure the timeline is up to date and nobody's trying to, uh, you know, time travel or do something that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, Loki ends up doing that, which we actually find out in an end game. They kind of set up the show for us in that. But it's just really cool to see because Tom Hiddleston... The guy that plays Loki has died in this show series more than any other character has ever. So I really like seeing um, him again. But just really cool seeing Loki as like the actual like good guy as this finally. Um, I really hope in Avengers that we get to see him again. I know that he isn't exactly able to do anything because he's kind of made it to where... He's the, the God of Stories, which I guess this is in Season 2. I think they actually have that separate. Yeah, Season 2 is over there. but So I guess we got to talk about Season 1. But I liked. I, I still like Season 1 quite a bit. I think I like Season 2 a little better. We'll get to that. Um, seeing Mobius, still really cool character. I like seeing Owen Wilson in this. And then even with the villain at the end, where he's supposed to become Kang, even though his character's kind of ruined now the MCU thanks to the actor with how what's been going on with him but he who remains just supposed to be the watcher of all the timelines which is in charge of the TVA I really liked his uh, character of that and he just how he was warning them if they kill him they can do that but it's gonna free all my other variants and if you think I'm dangerous just wait until you meet the others so I really liked how they had that conclusion there to show uh Possibly the future of the MCU, but now they have it to where that might not even have to happen anyway, especially with how they ended with season two. But we'll definitely put that A tier. I think. I think we're gonna have to put this like up here, past Iron Man two. Man, I want to. I almost want to like save this and do the part two because there's just a lot of stuff, and I don't know how long we're going to record, but I don't know how long this is going to take, uh, I might actually do that, I think we're going to make a part two of this, guys, because it's just going to be a long video, it might not be as long of a video for part two, but I think I'm going to do that, there's not even that many projects, but I'm just getting kind of tired of my voice certain, so I'm going to do this for part two, I know, I'm stubborn, um, Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, we will finish this in the next part.